Hi, welcome to part two of this PowerPoint 2007 instructional series. In this part, we're going to set up the design of our first inside slide, or first content slide. It's the design of this slide that's going to be replicated throughout the content slides of our presentation. My preference for content slides, and the predominant preference that you probably see these days, is to keep the background of that content slide as plain as possible, with just a few graphical accents that continue the color motifs and the branding that was established on the welcome slide. What does plain mean? Well, it probably means first avoiding the overly designed, overly busy Microsoft PowerPoint templates of the past. You know, the ones with skyscrapers, light bulbs, oceans, and the screaming neon colors and patterns. Today, PowerPoint backgrounds do just that. They stay in the background in order to provide a clear palette for the presentation of your ideas and your words, which are the real stars of the show. So with that design philosophy in mind, let's take a look at the first content slide of this sample presentation that we're trying to reproduce in PowerPoint 2007. We begin with a brief discussion of the so-called new literacies, as you see here, and also sometimes called 21st century literacy. The money quote from this site is important to our discussion. Today's readers become Okay, you see what we need to reproduce. The first thing we need to do is to insert a new slide. So we go to New Slide, pull down a blank, and that inserts a new slide. Then we're going to reproduce the rectangle, the drawing shape that's going to give us our fill up at the top. Now we have two choices in reproducing this title bar, this divider between the title, which always goes in the top sixth of the slide. We have two choices. Choice number one is to use our color picker, our color sniffer, and to pick up on one of the colors from our Camtasia Studio 5 color palette. And we can do that by sniffing it, and here we've got our numbers, and then we go to our more fill colors and use those numbers to reproduce that color, which is easy to do. Cranking in the RGB numbers gives us that uh, green that we're trying to reproduce, and we apply it. Looks a little flat, so let's apply a gradient to it, and we go to Shape Fill, and then we choose our gradient. Let's choose a dark gradient here, and as you can see, it's dark on the left, and then blends to the right to a lighter green. Well, that's not enough contrast, is it? So let's go to our Gradient Format Shape Toolbar. And here we can play with our stops, which indicates where that light and dark dividing line goes in the gradient. But we can also add another stop. And when we do, we can add another color. And if we add white to this, this will allow us to go from 100% on the left to 0% on the right in terms of the kind of color. So we go from full color on the left to no color on the right, and we get that full gradient. Let's take out our outline and see how it looks. Looks a little flat. Let's reproduce our, our little nudge bar over on the left that indicates, gives us a little bit of space where our title goes. Uh, we're going to take just a dark part here. Uh, there are several ways to do this. I'm just going to rotate it so the dark part is over on the right. I just flip the horizontal. And then it's a simple matter of changing the width of this. If you want to change just one aspect, you need to make sure your uh, lock aspect ratio is off. So I'm going to make sure that's off. And then I can change just one aspect of this, the width 
aspect. Each block is uh, one inch, so I'll take about 0.75 of that, and that's what we've got. So that's one way of producing that title bar up at the top. Now here's another way. We can take a swatch of any photograph we have, and we can use that swatch to reproduce this color bar, this title bar up at the top. So let's pop in our Camtasia Studio photograph, then let's use our crop tool to take just a swatch of that a little green button in the middle. And then by taking that swatch, we can extend it to give us that kind of interesting color bar that continues our color motif and our branding in our title bar that will be the title bar on every content slide throughout our presentation. So as you see, I've used my crop tool. I've got an interesting swatch there. I make sure my lock aspect ratio is off. And then all I've got to do is change the width of that to get the color bar that will go all the way across the top and divide the part of my slide, which is the top one-sixth of a content slide. It will divide the title part of my slide from the actual content part of my slide. Now I've got the main part of it in. Now all, all I've got to do is reproduce a small uh, three-quarter inch part of it, and I will have finished with the title bar that I can simply replicate or duplicate on every content slide throughout my presentation.